Hey friends, it's your director of marketing, Amy from Grey Ghost Vineyards. And we're just, we know it's kind of a two minute warning, giving people time to get, um, get situated. I hope you've got your glass of wine ready. It's happy hour at Grey Ghost Vineyards. Yep, and I'm guessing there'll be a little delay as we get going. So what, right now, I'm, I'll show you. At, oh, we got my first check-in. I'm showing you. I'm heading up the stairs. Rebecca's watching. Angie's watching. All right, why don't you girls tell us what you're drinking while you're watching? We are so excited. So we're heading up to the lounge. Got a cheers from Rebecca. Roger Conlon, good to see you. Hey, Roger, just a reminder, we have a prize for you out here as one of our runners up in our little Facebook challenge. Oh, Angie's got Cabernet. Barbara Allen, how are you doing? Well, looky who we have here. All right, so we're just getting settled in. Hi, Stacy Tiley, we know what you're drinking tonight. We know what you're drinking. We are so excited to have you all here. Cheers, Susan. Good to see you. Rebecca's got Save All. Wow, these are scrolling quickly. So we're going to come back to Amy again because you're not going to get to see much of me tonight. So Wilson and Karen, good. The Christophers, good to see you. Oh my goodness. Lori needs some Gewürztraminer. We got your Gewürztraminer. <laughs> Stacy. yes you do. Okay, so I'm going to be turning this around, and we're going to get going with Alan, Cheryl Keller, owners and wine. <laughs> oh, Pam just wrote, hey, it's the lady that sold me my two cases. <laughs> oh, my gosh, this is really fun. Beth Carpenter saying, hi, Alan, Cheryl. Okay, so we're going to go back to Alan, Cheryl. We're going to get this night started. It's kind of just a little bit of a free-for-all, okay? So Roger and his Gewürztraminer with grilled chicken, Trisha Hurlbert, Bill Engel. Oh, my goodness, good stuff. All right, so here we go. You're, you're on, Big Daddy. <laughs> I have to wait for the nod from the producer over here. Hey, thank you all so much for joining us at our personal happy hour. This is something we try to do very frequently on our own. You're probably wondering why you were invited. Well, Cheryl basically said to me that she suffered enough by being with me so she feels it's time for everybody else to have the same feeling. So it's just great to be here. What I thought we'd do is start off today and talk a little bit about some of the fun and exciting things that happened at the winery uh, while we were open. So Cheryl, let me turn it over to you. Well, I guess I guess that was pretty fun. I, we'll probably come back to this later on uh, and talk a little bit about more of these fun things. You know, I've got a great idea. A nice way to break the, the ice is a joke. So if you're all game, let me tell you a quick joke. No! <laughs> well, no is right. Well, how about that? I think I've got a universal approval for the joke. What we're going to do is talk a little bit about this salesman who was driving in the country, very similar to where we are right now, and came across a farm and couldn't help but notice that there was a pig out there with a wooden leg. Well, he had never seen such a sight. So he pulled over and caught the farmer and said, just out of curiosity, what's the deal with the pig with a wooden leg? The farmer looked at him and said, that's no ordinary pig. That's a very special pig. About three months ago, the barn caught on fire and that pig broke through the doors and pulled all the horses and cows out and saved them all. The salesman looked at him and said, my, that is a special pig, but that's not all, says the farmer. He said, about two months ago, we were having a big uh, uh, deal in the field and my tractor turned over and caught me underneath the tractor and that pig was able to pull me out by the collar and save my life. He said, wow, that is a special pig. Well, that's not all, says the farmer. Last month, the house caught on fire, and that pig broke through the doors and saved the whole family. Now, that's a special pig. And that salesman just shook him and said, man, that is. Just out of curiosity, what's the deal with the wooden leg? Well, says the farmer, when you got a pig that special, you don't eat them all at once. <laughs> we know you're clapping at home, everyone. 
now it's time to get a little bit serious. Tonight we're expecting hundreds, maybe thousands, maybe tens of thousands of viewers. And if that's the case, some of your comments may not come right through. So be patient and we'll do our best to handle anything that may come up. Now, as you notice, our wine glasses are empty. So we thought we'd just go ahead and have the wine tonight. Cheryl? Yes, I'd love to have a glass. Are you okay with this? Yes, perfectly fine. I'm stunned. Okay, I'll have a glass and Cheryl will have a glass. So Suzanne Thomas said she needs a drink after that joke of yours. <laughs> Trisha wrote, best dad joke ever. <laughs> well, what we're going to do is start the evening off with a Riesling. I tell you what, to make this a little more fair than normal, why don't we have glasses that are a little more equal? Now, for those who aren't familiar with our Christmas event, we have a Christmas glass that comes out every year. And Cheryl and I both have our favorites. So she's my Christmas tree girl, and I love the thought of flying in a plane. If they look familiar to you as if they were corks, that's exactly the idea. So as I mentioned, what we're going to do is start off the 2019 Riesling. What a nice way to have a drink. The Riesling that we're, we're enjoying tonight was cold fermented in stainless steel and we watched the fermentation until it got to a little less than 1% residual sugar. So we're really talking about a very nice uh, dry crisp style Riesling that's going to really go nicely with food. Do I see another glass coming forward? <laughs> I can't believe you're going to leave me out of this one. JC, our favorite chef at Marriott Ranch, just said, this is really high tech for you guys. You better believe it, JC. <laughs> and Lori is in Pittsburgh watching tonight and can't wait to come and see us again. Well, we can't wait to have you. Uh, it's been kind of an exciting period of time for us. Uh, uh, we're all suffering through a little bit of a conflict, which we have no idea how long this is going to last. But I'll tell you right now, we miss you all and can't wait to have you all back again. Uh, we're trying our best to keep the winery moving and keep everything rolling as much as possible. Uh, in fact, Amy's in the process of trying to get our shipping license approved for Virginia. So if this works out, for those of you who can't come out, we'll be able to get wine to you. Do you have any comments or anything you want to throw out? So Michelle Cross misses you all. John Carpenter said that the fire truck is still his favorite glass. Suzanne asked if Amy's going to get a glass. Oh, you were just wondering that. I know, girl. I'm not about, where is my camera? I am not about to be left out of this fun. And for those of you who don't know, Amy is enjoying this happy hour right along with us. <laughs> Uh, a little bit about what's going on at the winery. We're in the process of getting wines either prepared for bottling or actually bottling. So the wine we're having tonight was bottled about three weeks ago. Right now the Save All 2019 has been pulled from the barrels. We're in the process of getting it ready. And yes, our first to do in two years is also in the bottle. So we're really excited about having that released down the road. For those of you who can't pronounce German, the Gewürztraminer or G wine is also in the bottle. So we've been moving along quite nicely. As far as the vineyard is concerned, everything is still dormant. Although if anyone was in tune with Amy yesterday, she saw the, saw the fuzz on the Riesling. So that's a sign that things are gonna start popping pretty quick if the weather holds. Anyone have any comments about the Grey Ghost Vineyards or bottling or anything else? So we did have one person ask, and I forget the comments are coming in fast, who it was, asked, is there anything that your friends who are watching this can do for you guys? Oh my gosh, yes. Uh, for one thing, it's very soon that the government, your uh, major check is going to be coming to you from the United States government. Uh, I think it's in the neighborhood of about 10,000 plus per person. We're expecting to have most of you head right out here 
and encourage the economy by spending it here. Uh, we're not asking you to. We think that uh, Donald Trump and the entire Senate and Congress would support that move. Uh, anyone else that wants to spend their money here who hasn't been here, we're more than welcome to take that too. <laughs> Rebecca's asking if we offer gift certificates and Karen says she's gonna spend all her money here. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Karen, you're my favorite. Oh, Karen's favorite right now. <laughs> yes, we do offer gift certificates and that's a pretty clever idea because at, the, at, at some point in time, somebody's gonna get something mm -hmm. very, very special and it's us, the money. <laughs> so, we love you very much. You can tell Dad's having a good time. Oh, Karen knew she was the favorite. Oh, Chris and Sally said that their check bounced. Oh, JC, yeah, our winemaker's dinner was a lot of fun, and their last real function at Mary Yacht Ranch. You guys hang in there over there, guys. We're praying for you all. For those of you who missed the winemaker dinner at the Marriott, it was incredible. As usual, JC put together one of the most amazing meals, uh, blended it beautifully with the wines that we had. And I cannot begin to thank you, JC, and the entire Marriott staff for being able to pull that off before we, the nation was shut down. So, um, Trisha Hurlbert would like to know if you're taking nine-year-old boys. <laughs> wow. Seven I've, got, years. <laughs> I've got to be careful on how I answer that one. <laughs> but mom said in seven years, so you know that she's planning to um, use Aiden in the vineyard. Oh, Charlie's checking in. We love Charlie. She owns Murphy Beverage Company out in Winchester. Let's see, we had another. Oh, Beth, you asked if you can sign up for Harvest. Yes, whenever you come out again, and if we need to extend or do something different, we'll do that. But if you're picking up a case, absolutely, we can do that when you come in. What we may even do is talk internally and see if there's options for signing up. So many of you have been so loyal and so much fun to be with at Harvest. We're doing our best to increase our technology for the opening uh, new movement. Uh, I think it's what it's amount to is we're going to probably resurface the uh, PowerPoint, but we're not too sure yet. <laughs> Darlene, depending on where you live, actually, yes, we can deliver. So you can give us a call and we'll see what we can do for you. Stacy's house white is being poured at her house. We got Carrie in from Daytona, Nancy Stoltz from down in Florida. Tim from Vienna. We are having a good time, you guys. Thanks for checking in. How is everybody else's day going today? Oh, so you're having the same day that mom's having, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay, Stacy. We missed you at the Marriott dinner, but we'll definitely see you guys back next year. We've got Terry checking in from Haymarket. We got a good list of people at the party tonight. Jackie's drinking her Grey Ghost in Herndon. If I've got the count right, listening from, to Amy, we're well over a thousand people. So this is truly exciting. <laughs> yes, Kathy, we do have the Dal Blanc. You come and get it, girl. Brand new 2018. We haven't even sent out the new release email yet. Let me tell you, it is awesome. Yay, Julie Mahoney. Karen's drinking some Victorian Red. Good girl. All right, Cheryl, do you have anything else to tell us about your day today? <laughs> we miss you all. Oh, so Chris and Sally said if you have a glass of wine in each hand, you can't touch your face. <laughs> Virginia Wine Time is drinking 2010 Merlot in D.C. Oh, good stuff. That was a brilliant statement on the two glasses. I, we've got to start utilizing that more often. I think the nation is going to become much more healthy. We're also seeing a substantial uptick in alcohol consumption. There's always been a statement that three things in the world do not decrease due to tragedies or depressions, etc. One is alcohol, one is chocolate, and one is sex. So in that regard, life is definitely going to be good. Oh, goodness. Do you see... Yes, Trisha, we are still open. Um, so Trisha said, and I'll go ahead and answer this, or Al, do you want to answer um, 
Are you guys still open? I have no idea what's happening. Yeah, we are definitely open and Amy will give you a little more detail, but we're trying to expand our hours. And Amy, if you would tell them a little bit about how we're handling it uh, in order to be both safe for the consumer and also safe for the winery. So y'all wanted to see me again, did ya? <laughs> we're open right now, Tuesday through Thursday for pickups. And then we're also, do you know what it's like trying to read and talk at the same time? But I love that you guys are reading your, um, uh, oh, I hear Al pouring more wine. My glass is so <laughs> far away. Oh, okay, so we're open Tuesday through Thursday, one to four, Friday through Sunday, 11 to five. You, uh, yes, you can sit outside, Stacy. We're um, trying to be very respectful of the rules of keeping everybody safe. We cannot have more than 10 people in the winery at a time, so we're real careful about that. Uh, Dad is disinfecting like that is his job. So everything is very sterile. Um, we can do pickups, so if you don't want to interact with us, we totally understand. You can call an order, we can load up your car, but if you want to come in and say hi, you can totally do that. If it's a pretty day and you want to take a picnic outside with a bottle of wine, we're spacing people out. All right. Back to Alan Cheryl. Yeah, somebody checked in and said there was an awful lot of talking and not a lot of drinking, so you guys better get cracking. <laughs> well, that was the beauty of having it flip over to Amy. We just knocked off two bottles and we're off to the third here. Uh, along with what Amy said, all of the seating has been removed in the winery, so it eliminates the chances of anyone having a problem with uh, the Great Ghost having customers. And also, she also mentioned the outdoor seating. It's been spread out significantly, and we are very much aware of the concern people have, so we are positioning people when they go out so that we don't have them seating, seated close to each other. And, and unfortunately, those of you that have enjoyed our upstairs uh, lounge, Mosby Lounge, we've got that closed down because the seating is too intimate. Yeah, so... Uh, to answer your question, Stacy, that came in, we can't have more than 10 people inside at a time. And outside, as long as everybody is spaced out, it's we're doing fine there. I mean, there, at this point, we haven't had a rush, but we're going to be making smart decisions. Karen, no, we are not currently doing tastings, and we're not doing wine by the glass either. You'd have to do a whole bottle, which if you don't finish, you can take home with you. You can bring your own glasses or we have plastic cups. So we're minimizing the things that are handed back and forth from one another. Again, it's, it's a trying time. We're very, very sensitive to the restaurants, uh, especially those that have been so wonderful in supporting us. Uh, we try our best to make sure that people know that these restaurants are still in operation. Most of them are doing curbside. Most of them are also allowing you to purchase wines with the curbside purchase. So that's something that's very significant and I would hope you'd all take advantage of that. Uh, these restaurants and the staff, it's a very painful thing to see uh, and we just really feel for them. Especially it seems to me like the people that are hurting the most are the ones that can afford it the least. So do uh, keep that in mind as you're out there. Uh, we did with one of the uh, restaurants yesterday. We were very fortunate that Amy was up in Northern Virginia and did a, uh, a pickup. I was going to say a drive-by, <laughs> but basically it was a curbside pickup, and the, the dinner was just outstanding. It was uh, Laporta's. So if you have a chance, Laporta's uh, out in Old Town Alexandria is doing a marvelous job, and we'd like to really see them succeed just like all the other restaurants out there. Yeah, and that's a good thing that Al's bringing up too, is uh, we are essential businesses right now. Anybody who carries alcohol, God bless America. <laughs> so you can go to any of the wine shops. If you go to our website and see the purveyors page, it'll tear, it, it'll tear, it, excuse me, it will tell that you where. That glass of wine, Amy. <laughs> I know, right? It'll tell you where we're carried. And so if you buy Grey Ghost from those shops, it helps two businesses at one time. Thanks, Chris and Sally. They said that to turn the upstairs into a studio and do this frequently. We love it. 
We're sort of thinking this might have to be a weekly happy hour, actually. Who wants this to be a weekly happy hour? <laughs> Believe it or not, it crossed my mind. Poor Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> Misery loves company. We all know that one, right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, we're also looking at some other uh, things that we want to do. Some of them are virtual. And we'd love to get your input on ideas that you may have. One idea that we came up with was do a virtual blending class. And we're still working on that, whether or not that would be possible. Another one is virtual tastings. And again, all of these have to be uh, coordinated in time. Uh, but if, that's, if there's other ideas that you all have, please don't hesitate getting in touch with us. Amy doesn't have anything else to do, so she'll be more than happy to answer. I love your ideas, and thank you to Jackie, who just said that um, Alan, Cheryl, you are two very special people. They love you a lot, so that was really nice, Jackie. Thank you. Okay, so Michelle said, Michelle Cross says we need to get on Zoom to interact virtually. Stacy likes virtual tastings. Al, oh, Al needs to talk louder if possible, please. Thank you, Jane. We got you. I'll definitely do. I'll definitely <laughs> do that. That hasn't ever been a problem in the past right. around here, so we'll definitely make sure that that's covered. Trying to think of some of the other exciting things that are happening at the winery. Of course, some of the events are on hold. We're doing our darndest not to cancel them, but at least delay it. So if Mother's Day doesn't show up in May, that doesn't mean we don't love mothers. It just means that mother may have to wait a little bit before we can pull something off for you all. And the same thing holds for just about everybody else. Uh, anything else that you all want to talk about? Yes, Bill Engel just asked, can you talk to us about the impact of the mild winter that we've had? Very good question. Uh, we're still waiting to see what the outcome is. The upside is that we had little or no what we would call winter damage, which means that the trunks, we didn't lose any vines, we didn't have anything where uh, uh, the vineyard was damaged. The downside is that when you have a mild winter, you also don't have the kill on the uh, pest inside, insects. So we're waiting to see whether or not that impacts us. Uh, as far as the sun, uh, winter was concerned, not only was it mild, but it was relatively dry. And normally we like to have a little bit of snow, which is absorbed into the ground relatively slowly. If it's winter and it's raining, the water seems to run off. So that's again going to be an interesting uh, situation on what we're faced. Uh, this has been an unusual sun a winter. We've never had anything like it. Seems like the longer Cheryl and I are growing vines and producing wine, the more curves we're being thrown. So we'll have to see how this comes out. So Angie said that MW wants you to come over to his house and help him plant vines. I'm on my <laughs> way. <laughs> that was a good question, Bill. Thank you. And hang in there. We'll get that vertical back on the books for you guys. <laughs> Everybody's writing, ew, bugs. <laughs> Any other questions? They're still drinking, so. Oh, Big Daddy's looking at his watch. He's wondering if I didn't bring up a corkscrew for them. <laughs> That's no, no good. Well, this has really been a fun event. Uh, I hope we can repeat this with uh, the thousands and thousands of people who have joined us. Unfortunately, I only had one opening joke. If we do this next weekend, I will do my best to not only have an opening joke, but one that closes so that you'll all be able to just groan and be so happy that the, the uh, hospitality hour is over. Is there anything else that somebody wants to throw at us? Fortunately, you're not here to do it literally, but if we're, we're ready to catch it if you are. Well, Rebecca wrote more jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, my jokes were previously scanned, so the seven or eight hundred that I had in line 
came down to a single one. But we'll see if we can increase them next time. Angie wants washy, washy, washy. Oh. Yeah, Angie, we had to strike that one. <laughs> oh, Michelle says, how about a wine and cheese pairing class? Ooh, very good idea. Very good idea. Yeah. Oh, Debbie, cheers to you, and you stay healthy, too. We want to see you guys back at Harvest. Oh, so Trisha, who wants us to take his nine-year-old, her nine-year-old, said that when she sends her nine-year-old here, he'll be equipped with jokes. Thank you, Trisha. <laughs> very, very, very good. We appreciate that. Nancy, we love you, too, and we miss you. <laughs> well, you all take care. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Hold it. Hang on. We have, so Cindy Larkin said she came in late. Is Harvest still on? Harvest, <laughs> Harvest is so always on. on. One thing about the vineyard is it never stops. Uh, it's kind of like being a dairy farmer. The cow never stops giving milk. The vineyard is in the same way. So yes, Harvest is on. Uh, we haven't scheduled the dates yet. We're going to let the vines determine that for us. But we'll keep you all posted. So and, and again, the 2019s, we're in the process of putting them in the bottle. We're so excited for you to have them. I tell you, I'm enjoying my Riesling like you have no idea. Well, and I can't wait for the other case for the fruit. Right. So the Carpenters are drinking the 2014 Cabernet and loving that tonight. And you had the Peters family checking in, relatives from far, far away. Oh, wow. Jane Hunt says, thank you very much. She's having fun and she likes the wine pairing class idea. Thank you. I'm just going to say shout out to everybody who's saying um, they love you. They love us and miss us. We love and miss you guys too. We really, really do. Um, Robert, we're not doing online um, harvest signups yet. I mean, right now, this the technology that we have achieved tonight is really it's about... It's a miracle. <laughs> right so don't worry we're gonna keep you updated on harvest signups we have plenty of time for that so don't don't you worry we're gonna need you I know this is gonna come as a real surprise to you but this was not a scripted event I'm sorry this was a scripted event. <laughs> so thank you again so much for joining us seriously we're gonna see what we can do about making this if not a weekly thing uh, something that happens at least once every four or five years. <laughs> I don't know. Some of us might be up for once a day. What do you guys say? <laughs> Who's up for day drinking? We can do that while I'm still on the clock. I don't know how this happened, but somehow the glasses got empty, <laughs> and this is not supposed to happen at happy hour. I hope your glasses are not empty as well. Can you all hear me? I hope your glasses are not empty as well. If they are, there's plenty more of this at the winery. Please don't hesitate coming out, and we'll make sure you're well stocked. But we're closed for the night. <laughs> don't come out now. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa, yes, we still have Riesling. Oh, Michelle says yay to day drinking. Oh, a lot of people are saying yay to day drinking. <laughs> You guys are a hot mess. You can tell Roger wants to have it at breakfast. Um, <laughs> Lindell Peters says cheers. Oh. Teresa, we're out of Merlot, so sorry about that. We don't have Merlot left. There might be some people in on this little Facebook Live that have some that they would um, happily sell to you. You know what? The Apple House in Linden still has Merlot. Lori, there is coffee time and wine time. You got it, girl. And sometimes the line gets blurred on that, doesn't it? <laughs> By the way, Lindy, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank it's kind of, Linda, it's kind of nice to have a relative on the line. Uh, just great. But thank you again for coming on. You, I, I really, I know I speak for Alan Cheryl when I say that we love every one of you as much as you love us i'm watching all your names scroll up there look peter's got victorian red you guys are you guys are the bomb we would not be having so much fun at gray ghost vineyards really if it wasn't for you guys and we're all going to get through this we'll get through this i think one of the fun things very few people know how this all got started but I had a chance to go out to the West Coast to head up the Western Regional Marketing Office for the Postal Service back in the early 80s and brought Cheryl out. And at that time, 
Amy and Al were little tykes. And we had a chance to go to Napa before they were really discovered. There was a little winery there that had great uh, deli and we would buy some cheese, some sourdough bread, get some fruit and sausage, and then go out to the vineyards. And while the kids were running around in the vines, Cheryl and I were sucking down some really great California reds and enjoying the, the uh, uh, deli mm -hmm. as well. And at that time, I looked over at Cheryl and I said, you know, this is something we could do. Okay. <laughs> So with that, I think I've just said it all. <laughs> and by the way, it's increased our consumption a whole lot. Uh-oh, Lisa, somebody's cracking a bottle of Merlot at your house. You should have hid that. <laughs> oh, Trisha, we love Al's stories too. Thank you. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Is that a wrap? Or I, let's close it off for tonight. And again, we'll keep you posted. I know Amy does. She does a great job for us. And we'll let you know the next time we get everybody together. Probably won't be for another couple of hours. <laughs> so with that, do have a wonderful evening. Hugs and kisses, guys. We love you from Great Ghost.